Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bull Technology. This is my big and beautiful Power Mac G5. This was the last PowerPC Mac that Apple ever released, as well as the most powerful. So today, we'll explore what this 50-pound behemoth is capable of today. Let's get started. Apple has gone through several CPU architectures over the years. The original Macintosh lineup used the 68K Motorola platform. Uh, in 1994, Apple made the switch to IBM's PowerPC platform. Then in 2006, Apple moved to Intel's CPUs. And now finally, here we are in the midst of Apple's most recent transition to their own Apple Silicon. I give you this history because I've shown on my channel that even Intel Macs from 2007 are still perfectly usable today, if not slightly outdated. So how much less capable is a later PowerPC Mac, such as this Power Mac? Well, let's find out. Let's first look at the specifications of this machine. This machine was released in 2005, and it represents the fastest Power Mac that Apple ever sold. It features two dual-core G5 CPUs running at 2.5 GHz, making this the only quad-core Power Mac Apple ever made. This machine also features 4 GB of RAM, though it can support up to 16 GB of RAM, which was an insane amount of memory given the age of this computer. This computer also features NVIDIA GeForce 6600 graphics and a 250GB hard disk drive. The iteration of OS X on this machine is the latest version of macOS supported on the G5, which is macOS 10.5 Leopard, which came out in 2007. Unlike modern Macs, this Power Mac is incredibly upgradable. Sliding off the side panel reveals the modular interior, and wow, is this a beautiful interior or what? This big G5 compartment is where the dual G5s sit, and I should mention that they are actually water-cooled because of how much heat they generate. Behind the front fan, we can see our eight RAM sockets, of which four are currently populated. Above this chamber is where the PCI slots are, and this is where the GPU is sitting. Um, on top of this is where our optical and hard drives are, and interestingly enough, this machine uses serial ATA hard drives rather than IDE hard drives. So now that we know what this machine is made of, I say we give it some peripherals. For today's video, I will be pairing this G5 with my 23-inch Apple Cinema Display from 2005. Um, I'll also be using this excellent Apple Pro keyboard and this terrible Apple Pro mouse. So without further ado, let's see what this G5 can do. The G5 boots up surprisingly quickly given the 17-year-old hard drive, and the Leopard desktop is definitely nostalgic to people such as myself. I decided to attach an external hard drive to test some basic features such as video playback and iTunes usage. Opening several MP3 files into iTunes was no issue for the G5, and playback had no issues. It seems that if you want to use these old systems as iTunes machines, they have more than enough power for being a music-playing computer. Playing local video was definitely a mixed bag. A 1080p 30 video was a bit much for the G5 system. The video was choppy, and the audio was definitely out of sync. But 720p 30 local video was no problem for the G5. Well, I say no problem, but while playing HD video, the G5's fans sounded like this. Yeah. Perhaps the most important application for any computer user is the web browser. And on the G5, this is where things take a sad turn. There are several browsers that are still developed for the PowerPC platform, and perhaps the best example of this is 10.4fox, which has a special version compiled for the G5. 10.4fox is pretty much a PowerPC compatible iteration of Firefox, and users of older versions of Firefox should feel right at home using this browser. Using 10.4fox, basic websites worked pretty well on the G5. Uh, Wikipedia worked with no issues, and the speed was definitely tolerable for a machine of this vintage. 
Uh, the New York Times was another web page that worked with no issues. Where you will find issues, though, are in more complex websites. Uh, Twitter, for example, just refuses to render in altogether and complains about the outdatedness of your browser. Uh, YouTube is another serious thorn in the side on the G5. Um, you can actually load in the YouTube homepage, though it takes several minutes, but attempting to actually play any individual YouTube videos results in an error message. And again, this seemed to consume all of the G5's resources, as this is what the fans sounded like when attempting to load in the YouTube homepage. So when it comes to web browsing on the G5, it's really hit or miss. Email on the G5 is still possible though using 104 Fox. While the standard web version of Gmail is not supported, the basic HTML5 version of Gmail does work and you can actually view and compose emails on this system. Even Google Docs works on the G5. Well, kind of. Um, it definitely requires some patience, but if you need to edit or compose a quick document, it's definitely possible. But what about more complicated tasks? Well, I downloaded an older version of iMovie and attempted to edit some basic 720p30 video. And surprisingly, this machine was able to edit this basic 30 second video reel with no issues, even though the export took over five minutes. And again, the fans sounded like this. What about gaming? Well, the problem with gaming is that there are very few games that are supported on this incredibly old version of Mac OS, and there are even fewer games that support PowerPC chips. In fact, I don't have any games that run on the G5, so I guess gaming is almost out of the question on a G5 system, though I imagine games compiled for PowerPC chips would run pretty well on this system given its quad-core configuration. So there you have it. Is the G5 still usable? Well, kind of. Uh, let me just say this. If you're looking for a computer to do basic tasks, don't buy a G5. Go get yourself an early Intel Mac. It'll be much more capable, quiet, and energy efficient than this machine. But if you have a G5, or you're looking to pick one up as a collector's item, just know that it's still capable of some modern tasks. Fan noise and all. I love my G5, and I think it will always have a place in my computer collection. It's absolutely beautifully designed, and it represents the last of a forgotten era. So long live the Power Mac G5. Be sure to leave a like, a comment, and definitely subscribe. And thank you all for watching. Mm -hmm.